Ooh, look at that. Yeah, someone spent some time with this. Hello, Space Cowboys. Time for something a little different. I found a Flat Earth game. Game. Uh, the Flat Earth Simulator, available on Steam. So, uh, we're gonna do a little bit of a live reaction and review here and, uh, see what we, uh, see what we've got here. Uh, first I wanna go through the description. Actually, let's take a look at the developer. See if they've made anything else. No, stop downloading the two gigabyte, the, excuse me, the six and a half gigabyte update to No Man's Sky, for God's sake. Uh, okay, so the truth tellers have made one game. Why am I not surprised? All right, so, warning, the following presentation might include information that is highly contested by the established consensus. The information will be presented as it stands by the Flat Earth Theory. Will it though? Because you're missing a dome. So, about this game. Is the Earth a globe? Why do you think that? Does your everyday life confirm that fact? Explore the alternative of the Flat Earth Simulator, an interactive simulation of the day and night cycle on a flat Earth with information waypoints all over the Terran plane. Explore the reason why space programs are faked and learn about the Great Antarctic Ice Wall and ascend into the highest layers of the Atmo plane. This unbiased... <laughs> this unbiased look... What was it? Uh, this unbiased look upon the information and arguments of the Flat Earth Theory. That's an incomplete sentence. Very good. This is not simply a game or a visual experience. It is a simulation of the day slash night cycles on a flat earth. This experience includes 15 minutes of informative voiceover. That's, that's a good length. Thank you for making the video for me. Six waypoints to explore all aspects of the flat earth. Flat earth cycle simulation. Discover hidden clues. There's also information in this game that's hidden from most of the players, but those who seek it will find it in the hidden in the clues throughout the game. So is this like that Kanye Quest game where it was actually like the initiation to a cult? That would be amazing. This game stands in no association to the Flat Earth Society or any other organization promoting the Flat Earth Theory. It's created by an independent team of free-thinking individuals. Well, to be fair, most Flat Earthers decry the Flat Earth Society, so there's that. Uh, I just want to point out really quickly, this game costs three thirty-nine Canadian, uh, and Steam has a wonderful feature where if you play a game for about two hours and you don't like it, you can get a refund, so I won't be paying for this. Uh, or I might be. Depending on how qu uh, high quality the animation is, I might keep it just to have access to a decent simulation of the Flat Earth non-model. Uh, so let's get into it here. I'm, sh I'm going to show the whole process, including buying the game. There we go. Purchase for myself. Okay. Purchased. Awesome. I got Steam points for that. Sweet. Alright. So let's install it. I didn't see how big of an install it was. Hopefully it's small. No, stop updating No Man's Sky. Install this piece of crap. 241 megabytes. Yeah, that's not a big game. Alright, game is installed. Let's do this thing. Ooh, there's achievements. There's 42 Steam achievements. And one of them is launch the game. Alright, so they're those kinds of achievements. Here we go. Really? Like, is, is this the part where it's installing fucking ransomware on my computer or some shit? Alright, well. You wanna watch Red Letter Media with me? No, you gotta, bl you gotta blow out the entire front of the building. <laughs> look at, oh, look, look at, at that! Look at that priceless <laughs> a piece of architecture! <laughs> Big one, small one, some as big as your head. There we go. Let's do this. Follow 
following presenta presentation might include information that is highly contested by the established consensus. You mean disproven? No, I didn't read the rest of that. I was too busy laughing. Since the Victorian age, humanity has given in to the illusion that there is a natural world which can be measured and understood. And through close observation, a resemblance of natural truth can be gained. Who is that? That's a Every big name. Every corner of the world needed to be measured and catalogued. Through the times of further industrialization and the development of our modern society, many deemed truths of bygone eras irrelevant and dangerous. Globular moon? So they That's discarded not them without with asking. On the other hand, they accepted truths from periods more aligned with the political landscape of modernity without question. One question nobody seemed to pose and no one ever again seemed to doubt was the shape of our world. Bullshit. Although our daily experiences do not suggest that the Earth is a globe, everyone seemed to just believe it as a fact. Don't they though? Until one brave American decided to research matters more thoroughly. Samuel Robotham, <laughs> also known as Parallax. Why has modern science failed to recognize the true shape of the Earth? Don't astronomy and the space programs clearly disprove what humanity believed in for centuries? Well, they do. The flat Earth theory states that modern science is ill-equipped to answer the question because of zeteticism. A zetetic <laughs> forms the question, then immediately sets to work making observations and performing experiments to answer this question. It turns out, we have been asking the wrong questions all along. Uh... <laughs> all right, all right, initial thoughts here. Hell of an intro. I recognize that uh, voice speaking. I don't know who it is though. Um, globular moon and sun are not consistent with flat earth theory most of them don't accept that the moon or sun are spheres despite the fact that they provably are uh what's that i want to click on everything because they said there was like secrets and everything right Ooh, look at that yeah someone spent some time with this very nice. All right, let's start with the sun. The sun. The sun is a revolving sphere. It has a diameter of 32 miles and is located approximately 3,000 miles above the surface of the Earth. <laughs> the sun's area of light is similar to the spotlight of a searchlight. This means that only certain portions of the Earth are illuminated at a time. Yeah. It also describes how night and day arise on a flat Earth. The apparent view of rising and setting are caused by perspective. <laughs> Just as a flock of birds overhead will descend into the horizon as they fly into the distance. <laughs> Together with the moon, the sun rotates around a mysterious central point of rotation. I'm not going to debunk any of this, by the way. This is all Pratt's. It's all been done before. I'm getting achievements for everything I click on. You guys don't know what achievements are. All right, that's pretty funny. Hmm. What's that? Is that a secret? Is that a ghost? The moon. The moon. The moon is a revolving sphere. It has a diameter of 32 miles and is located approximately 3,000 miles above the surface of the Earth. The moon is thought to be spherical due to a slight rocking back and forth over its monthly cycle. Libration. The moon does not emit light by itself. It is lit by the sun. It moves from 3,000 miles to 2,000 miles over the duration of a month, thus causing the lunar cycle we observe as new moon, half moon, and full moon. It is still debated by many of the planar astronomers if the moon has a surface sufficient for anyone to stand upon it. Parallax theorized that the moon might not be as real as it seems. For example, a strong, unnatural glow around its edge can be observed by anyone with a telescope or camera with sufficient zoom capabilities. Some citizen scholars investigating this interesting natural phenomena 
also agree that the moon is either a projection or an atmospheric reflection of a body closely orbiting the rim of the Terran plane. But for the model of the monopole flat Earth, the question of the moon's solidity is not relevant. In 1969, the moon was the setting of a fictional worldwide Until television Until 1972, in the they did it States six America, times. More specifically, NASA claimed to have landed on the moon. The hoax was <laughs> discovered by independent researchers but many of them have since been silenced by NASA agents or pressured into publicly <laughs> stating that they were wrong. Yeah, sure. You called the achievement that's no moon? Mm, I'm getting skeptical. This is this is giving me Poe vibes. Uh, so none of that made sense. Uh, the moon is a projection. You got to expand on that. Who was making the projection in, you know, 10,000 BC? Was it like some guy standing on a hill with a sign? Uh the moon moving from 3,000 miles to 2,000 miles, creating the lunar cycle. No. Just no. Uh, the moon does not emit light by itself. Well, pretty much every flat earther would beg to differ with you on that. Uh, so again, Poe vibes. Uh, but yeah, not in 1969. From about 1967-ish until... nine. Excuse me. Until 1972. Because, again, there were six missions that landed, a seventh that didn't land, and, like, three or four uh, pre-landing missions that everyone loves to forget about. Um, so none of that made sense. So we got the sun and moon. Wait, there's a thingy over here. What's this? Oh, the Antarctic ice wall. Uh, okay, where do we want to go next? Let's go with the cover-up. The cover-up. Ah. The fake space programs of NASA and the Russians are the reason why the weak sphere model has been propagated during the 20th century. NASA doesn't hide the true shape of the Earth. During their early fakes, they showed pictures of the spheroid Earth and are now stuck with it. Organizations like the United Nations even show the true shape of the Earth on their flag. Because the UN was founded before NASA, the designer of the flag took the uh -huh. model of the monopole flat Earth uh -huh. as a representation. Uh -huh. Although by the mid-60s, most of those institutions had recognized the hoaxes of the space programs, they continued to support it. The immense sums of money that are invested by governments and corporations in supposed space programs are used, to a large extent, to pay off the officials and many people who know about the true shape of the Earth, uh -huh. as well as so-called educators on TV. Uh -huh. In truth, an intricate web of lies has been spun to obstruct the public's clear view on reality. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, so we've got the UN flag, which is, you know, the Gleason azimuthal equidistant project projection. Uh, that's a globe map that they flattened, so, uh, no? Um, and then, where was it? God, scroll slower. The fake space program of NASA and the Russians. You're only missing about 62 others. Like, even China was trying to keep up with, like, the launch of Sputnik in the, in the late 50s. So, uh, and early 60s. So, yeah, a lot more than just NASA and the Russians. Uh, what, did it, what else did it say? Yeah, nothing interesting. All right, the cover-up. Cool. Next clue. Oh, I don't know if we're going to make it to that. Uh, so we did the cover-up. Let's go with space programs. Space programs. In the 1950s, during the Cold War, the two opposing blocs of the totalitarian USSR and the free world under the leadership of the United States started the competition of the supposed space race. Why space and its supposed conquest was so important was explained by Senate Majority Leader and later President Lyndon B. Johnson. Quote, Control of space means control of the world. The position of total control over the Earth that lies somewhere in outer space. This statement proves space was seen as an ultimate achievement, primarily on the grounds of propaganda, 
and the invoking of fear of war capabilities. A few months later, NASA was established. The Soviets, meanwhile, resorted to their first hoaxes with a supposed Sputnik satellite. This was in reality just a radio transmission that was broadcasted by a high-altitude aircraft, as previously uncovered documents at the end of the USSR in 1990 show. However, these documents have since been confiscated by various actors. Most of the rockets tested since the beginning of the space race have been failures. Some observers see in modern rocket launches nothing more than oversized effect shows that shoot a rocket a few thousand miles into the atmoplane until it is out of sight for most of the observers, where it deploys its parachutes and drops into the sea or is destroyed. What was at first just a game of intimidation by posturing with so-called achievements in space travel, developed into a huge financial scam during the 80s and beyond to the modern day, where companies pay for satellites that would supposedly be put into orbit for up to $10,000 per ton of payload. Hereby, not only do satellite manufacturers and NASA profit from the fraud, but also other new players such as SpaceX. Developing countries such as India also participate in the scam, in the hope that the huge sums involved would benefit their economies. A large community of citizen scientists do an excellent job in debunking many of the new fantasy space travel images from NASA and other agencies that are simply produced in their movie studios while the transmission of satellites are just relayed through a global network of radio towers. There is no flat earth conspiracy, but a fake space flight cabal that uses the illusion of space travel to make trillions worldwide. That's called the flat earth conspiracy. Um, yeah, so that was fun. Uh, literally everything about uh, space travel actually being done on the ground is disproven by satellite dishes at the equator. Have you ever seen them? They point straight up. Um, and the, uh, the whole rockets falling into the ocean, that's disproven by them being tracked after launch. Like, take a look at Astronomy Live. He tracked Perseverance uh, up until it was, like, well into high orbit and on its way to Mars. Um, I don't, ah, I don't know about the, uh, uncovered documents at the end of the USS USSR. I'll try and put something into editing if I can find anything about that, but that's interesting. Pardon. Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, I'm gonna say that was a, uh, loud fucking music. That was a statement pretty clearly made, uh, from the mindset of a Cold War politician. Um, and that's about all I can say about that. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, it's also interesting that you have this graphic of a satellite since, you know, you don't believe in that. It's a really nice model, too. Very nice. Cool. Okay, space programs. What do we have left? Oh, we better hurry up. We're getting our next clue soon. Uh, what have we not done? So we haven't done the Atmo Plane, the Summer Gate, or the Antarctic Ice Wall. Uh, let's do the Atmo Plane. The Atmo Plane. The Atmo Plane, or Atmo Layer, is a series of gas layers above the inhabited part of the Earth. If the Earth is finite, as shown in this model, the Atmo Plane gets thinner and less dense towards the edges. Why? The Arctic Ice Wall Wait, stops what? the Atmo Plane from flowing off the edge. If the infinite Earth hypothesis is true, the Atma plane would possibly extend as infinitely as the Earth does. The Atma plane is separated into the following layers. The tropo layer, where most of the regular aircraft travel, up to 11 miles. The strato layer, the highest ever reached layer by humans that can be reasonably confirmed, up to 30 miles. Uh -huh. The extent of the meso layer and iono layer are still debated their existence is assumed by the phenomenon of meteors and polar lights. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's the atmosphere with a different name. Uh, but Atmoplane gets thinner and less dense towards the edges, like toward Antarctica. That's just plain not true, because if that were true, people in higher latitudes or lower latitudes 
would have different air density. They don't. It The air gets thinner as you go up. That's it. Not out. Is this just an extension of, like, Flat Earthers think south is down? That was weird. Where's our clue? 290. Okay, uh... Let's do Antarctica. The Antarctic Ice Wall. At the outer edge of the world, we find the Antarctic Ice Wall. Mm -hmm. The wall was first discovered in 1841 by the British explorer James Clark Ross. Sure it was. He circumnavigated the edge of the known Earth. Uh -huh. Though he thought himself to be at the Southern Pole because he simply followed the magnetic field which develops outwards from the center. In 1841? The ice wall is, along most of its length, 150 meters high and by the description of Ross, an impenetrable shield of ice, snow, and rock. Several expeditions tried to reach the presumed South Pole until the Norwegian Roland Amundsen staged a successful journey to the South Pole at one of the few places where the ice wall can be accessed. <laughs> Beyond the ice wall exists a mountain range up to 2,000 meters high. Beyond that, the theories vary. Some predict that there is a rim, Others theorize that the world stretches indefinitely. Today, a select few ships can visit the outer border of the Planar Rim. It gets sold as the southern tip of the Earth, but evidence suggests it is only the furthest from the center. If the Arctic ice wall is the outer point of the world, it cannot be clearly determined, due to the fact that no one has ever crossed the mountain range to our knowledge. The extent of the Terran Plain cannot be reasonably determined. Yeah, that's so. That's so. Uh, why then does this exist? <laughs> like only a select few can reach it. I can book it right fucking now. Hilarious. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's funny. Um... I love the idea that there's like a magic spot where the ice wall like opens up. You got like a little thermopylae there that you can uh, that you can access the ice wall from. That's funny. What's that next clue? I don't want to miss that. We've only got one thing left: the summer gate. The summer gate. In never, this never model, heard of this. The Terran plane is represented as a solid disc with an end and a start. However, this is not the only model. Out of a sense of fairness, we should mention the infinite Earth theory. It states that the Terran plane is not finite, uh -huh. and that beyond the ice wall, other lands exist. The most uh -huh. popular of these theories is the Summer Gate theory. Uh -huh. It states that the ice wall just near New Zealand melts during the summer and leaves passage open to another ring of continents on the Terran plane. These continents are lit by another sol, called Bol, or Nemesis. <laughs> the transfer will only be possible during summer, as long as Bol and Sol are near each other. So only during a short night, a ship might traverse the gate and re-emerge in the light of Bol on the other side. <laughs> Traveling to this gate is near impossible. While one can traverse along the Arctic ice wall with the approval of the UN, no expedition is allowed near the supposed Summer Gate location. Citation. This gives the theory credibility and raises one question. If the Summer Gate is real, what might lie beyond its path? Some theorize that the mythical places of Atlantis and Hyperborea or many of the other lost continents of history are just behind the Arctic ice wall. Hyperborea? Like... Like hyperbolic? Is, is that what that is? <laughs> That's funny. Alright, well, real quick, we're gonna wait 30 seconds here to find out what our little, what our clue is. Um, but this was fun. It doesn't align with uh, what pretty much any flat earther out there believes or claims to believe. Uh, there's no dome, first of all. Like, really? You're gonna give me a flat earth simulator without a dome? Definitely getting a refund. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh huh. 
Oh, this this is like a trick to keep you playing long enough so that you can't get your money back. Uh, oh. <laughs> that don't work. That don't work. This is fun. Uh, let's turn off the waypoints. Ooh. <laughs> Look at that! It's got like a burning effect on the surface. Poof! <laughs> <laughs> this is this is dumb but awesome. Oh, look at that! What happens when the moon hits the Earth? Oh, it's the same effect. Really? You can come up with a new effect? That's weak. All right. Well, that was fun. Yeah, this is neat. It's a neat simulation. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna keep it. How do I? Yeah, I don't think I'll keep it. Um, I don't know. It's a nice simulation, but I, d I don't see a whole lot of practical applications for it. It, it was garbage. I mean, that's obvious. Uh, but I hope you I hope you guys had fun watching it, because um, this was uh, this was different. It was uh, you know it wasn't your usual uh, flat Earth buffoonery. I mean, it was. It was just in a new format. And with nice ambient music and uh, animation that someone actually spent time with. I appreciate the effort put into it. Uh, but yeah, like most things most things Flat Earth, it's a worthless pile of crap. Alright, that's it. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. See you over the curve, Space Cowboys. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. If you want to support me further, consider becoming a member or a patron or checking out my merch or my Amazon links. Thank you, and I will see you over the curve, Space Cowboys. In a fast cosmic arena. self-importance, the delusion that we have some